doing our very first video recording. Welcome to the Twin Life Podcast recording. Yes, video recording. Yay, you Yay. get to see us. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously, if you, you can see us and we're, this will be our first one. Obviously, this is going to be, what is this? This is episode 13. Yes. Um, that we're getting ready to record right now. But episode one of the vlog version. Yes, this is episode one of the vlog version. Obviously, with everything going on, we have plenty of time to uh, mess around with, mess around with and try new things. So we yes. yep. figured um, we wanted to connect with everybody and all of our listeners more on a personal basis. Yes. So that's how we do that. So, yep. yay. Yep. A, more, a reason to put on makeup and... Yes. Give everything. us a reason to get dressed up. Some do you have on lashes? I do. Do you put on lashes? I have a full... You can't see. I have a full <laughs> beat on right now. Lashes and all the things. I so. have a full beat with a little contour, but it's not like... Crazy. Ashley has glasses. I feel like she doesn't have to. I swear, glasses. like I feel like I can like cover up my face. I don't have to do yeah, that. Yeah, I I envy Ashley's glasses. Like I, that's why I have like my own blue light glasses because I can, which I have, I'm not wearing. But I feel like some days when I would go to work, I just like put them on because I didn't feel like doing anything. Yeah, for my face. So, well, we got everything set up. It took a little bit of time, but now that we have everything set up, we're going to go ahead and record. Okay. Yes, we're ready to record. Yay! Yay. All right. All right, Twin, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, and go. Hello. Hey, Twin. What's up, Twin? How are you? I am doing good, actually. Good. Despite all the craziness in the world right now, I'm doing pretty good. I have been, I think it's finally starting to get to me and Phoenix that we are stuck in the house really yeah it's pretty like it's hard to just be sitting in the house all the time and trying to constantly think of things to do that are different like in a weird way I feel like I kind of like I told Blake this and I think he took it like I don't know it was kind of like I don't know how he took it but I said last night I was like I was like I kind of have like I don't have any, I feel like I don't have anything to look forward to tomorrow like we don't have any like plans or anything that we're doing like yeah it's just like the same thing every single day like there's uh, there's only ever been so many days I could sit at home and like do anything or so many times I can like go for a walk or like you know I, I like to do things that are like fun and get us out and like I mean simple things like wanting to take our dog to the dog park because he's getting all like um he's getting like stir crazy and like he's real like oh like not in a mean way but just like obviously you can tell he really wants to go outside and Landon loves going outside and he misses going to parks and I think that's the biggest thing that I've noticed about Phoenix lately. Like the first week, he was like good. Yeah, but he's like, oh, I don't have to go to school. I yeah, have money. But now he's like, he's getting more grumpy. Like he's more irritable. He's more this. So I told Derek, yeah. I was like, we need to make a point of taking him outside every single day for like an hour because, like, he just because before we'd be like, hey, you want to go for a bike ride? No, I'm good. Or whatever. You want to stay inside? Yeah. And I think it was because like it's like a like. One week is like of spring break, so he's like, "Okay, cool. I had my break. I'm gonna go back to school." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't just, know. It's amazing how much different the world's gonna be after like all of this. I don't know. Hopefully, it blows over. But I mean, I have I heard somebody say that um, they're like, "Well, how do you think the world's gonna change with in comparison to now from before?" Like after nine eleven, like we got used to only be able to carry like teeny tiny like versions of like our soap and stuff. I like, can't. Oh carry right, right. Yeah. Or, like we actually I don't remember being able to like walk walk somebody, somebody to, the, to gate. the gate. Like yeah. we were little, so like we don't remember that. So we've never been able to walk somebody to the gate. Um so things like that that you just get used to, they're just small changes in life. I think that what's but, gonna happen is that like all these places that have been thinking that, oh, I don't think that um like washing hands and all that stuff, like not having your staff come to work sick, like yeah, valuing time off, valuing sick days, valuing days to yourself. These companies that are literally one week of being closed, like you really value your staff when you have when you literally can't staff your establishment because they cannot physically be there. Yeah, and also just like places that like would be like, okay, we're just going to put up hand washing signs because it's like you have to be yeah. the health department. And reality is like, no, we want to do hand washing signs because we don't need our staff to get sick. Like for me, my biggest thing about mm -hmm. me not getting about, and it's I guess it's kind of like a selfish thing. It's like. I wash my son's hands and my hands because I don't want us to get sick because our life must continue. Like yeah. before when I was working a full time job, I couldn't get sick. Like if I was sick, I would just go to work sick. I went to work sick so much when I worked there because it was like, I can't afford the, 
I mean, what was it? I think it was like ended up at my salary was like twenty dollars an hour basically, and for there ten hours a day. So yeah. I'm losing a hundred dollars every single time I don't come to work. Yeah, and it's not like you could be like, can I go to work for five hours and go home? Like they weren't really. Of course, you could say that, but it wasn't really accepting. Like they don't have personal days. So no, it's like take mental health days. How, how, how many of you that are listening to our podcast or watching us and or watching us have ever gone to work or like woken up in the morning and you're like, man. Like, I have a 100 degree fever, and who's gonna open or who's gonna like work? Like, we literally, when I was working, um, when I was working at Francesca's, we literally had six of us, the whole that staff, the entire place, and we were open from 11 to 9. And if one person didn't go to work, because there'd be two of us all day, one person opened long enough to make sure the other person got to go on their lunch, and then they would close with that last person, two of us for the whole day. And there's only six people on staff. If you're a key holder and opener, like you're the only person that can do that other than two other people on staff. Mm -hmm. So, and they already work five days a week. They're like, I don't want to come open for you. Like, this is my day off. Like, you know, so it's, and I know like, it's just because they don't want to, they don't want to pay, like there's not enough hours to go around to pay to have extra staff. So they don't think of it as like, Hey, we need staff just in case we think of it. This is the the minimum amount of staff we need to run the establishment. This is all we're giving you payroll for. Mm -hmm. And you can't keep people on staff who only work two hours a day. And I know, hours. like, in restaurants, too, there's almost, like, this sense of pride that, like, I'm sick, but I'm going to push through, you know? Yeah. Like, especially when you're a manager, it's like, like, we would, to be real, like, we'd be salty when people were, like, taking off, like, a whole week of work because they were sick. Like, yeah. like really, are you that sick? Like, you need a whole week off? Or, like, like, man, like, now I have to close now because this person called out sick. It was kind of like. It was more of like a, a culture that we created, like a culture of like, well, they're guilting you. Yeah, like, or shaming. Really, we did all that about shaming. <laughs> yeah, that should be but like sick shaming you. Like, I legit yeah. am sick. I do not feel good. And it kind of makes, it, 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 it like has the opposite effect of, there was a time where like, I literally woke up on a Sunday and I only had to be at work for four hours just simply to like, for a filler shift for at Fran. And I did not, I was like, I woke up and I was like, I did not feel, I didn't feel good the night before. Mm -hmm. I texted the girls and said, hey, is there any way I can just not come in? And their response was basically corporate will be up on our butt because we need to fill the payroll. I'm like, so they're going to be mad at you because you use less payroll hours? Yeah. Like, which doesn't make sense. That, which makes no sense to me. I'm like, that's not like, it's literally four hours. Like, I understand it was the holidays. It was on a Sunday. But like, I, I'm like, I, I've worked five, six days a week for like a month. I'm sick because I've worked that much. I just want to take one day off. That doesn't affect anybody because I always open. So it's like a one day I could actually be like, ooh, I could actually not work. And I wasn't feeling good. And I ended up being, I worked through being sick. I was sick for two weeks and I worked through being sick. And you were probably, to be honest, sick longer because you had to go to work. Yeah, because I didn't rest. The reality is if you gave people the 24 hours that they need to recover, usually they bounce back the next day. Yeah. And they've broken their feet. Their fever's broken, whatever it may be. Yeah. But realistically, like, you thought people like. Even if not 24, 48 hours. And some, most people are bouncing back pretty quick from basic stuff like a cold or a flu. Yeah. And I mean, again, like as a salaried employee, I had, I actually started accumulating. So it was interesting because I actually started accumulating sick days. And when I left there, I got paid like, I don't know, an extra $600 because I had so many sick hours because yeah. you get 30 a year. Speaking of sick days, what? the law here in California, I don't know if it's, in, if it's like this anywhere else, but the law here in California. So Ashley and I are both aren't like, we're not married yet, but our significant others if one of them is sick or we're sick like if one of like okay so at one point they like, had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. they were they argued me on getting my eight hours of sick i remember I had not his, like and i aren't married i'm like he's we're not married legally no but he's your my spouse in every other way but the paperwork we have a kid together like if one if he's sick somebody so has, has to take care of their landing yeah so for like, there should be a caveat in there for like, if you share a child with that person and you are living together and share a child, or if you share responsibility of your child, and that person. But the, is the, but the addendum to that law, by the way, is that like, if somebody significant to your life gets sick and it's going to affect your ability to go to work, i.e., if you live with your mother and she is sick, yeah, and but it says it says hospital. parents. It says I think I don't think it says parents, but it says grandparents, um, grandparents, spouse, your child has to be sick. Or um, or your spouse, it doesn't a lot for your partner. So another thing too, what about gay couples that aren't married? That aren't married legally, like and obviously this was like, they can legally get married. But in domestic the state now, but. but domestic partnerships would fall under like to be real. But we have to legally file for domestic partnership right. to prove that. Unless you live in Texas, in which you can consider domestic partner within 
a year to live with somebody, I think. You have to, like, divorce them. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Blake and I have lived together now for four, three, four years? Well, Derek and I have lived together Almost for three and a half years. Oh, yeah, so Blake and I have lived together for four. Yeah. Um, but, so what I was saying about the, about the six days, so I accumulated a bunch of sick days and ended up getting paid out a lot. But my staff, when they were sick, were always asking them, do I get sick pay? Do I get sick pay? And I was like, I don't think so. They don't even get vacation. So, like, not only that, they can't take time off just for you mental health. You can't California and they can't accumulate sick pay. Then it's like a weird amount. Yes, but, okay, but again, with sick pay, the deal with sick pay is that you have to average a full-time employee. Okay. But in California, they purposely keep the employees from getting from being full time employees, which is weird. Full time, I think in California is thirty hours. It's, it's thirty, it's thirty for eight to forty hours. But that's full. But that's okay. But at Fran, I was working thirty, and I got I got sick pay. But that might be just a corporate thing that they allow. That's completely different than like what the actual law is. That just means you franchise the school. <laughs> yeah. But like technically, the way that so this is the thing: restaurants. Okay. If everybody got. They don't want to pay overtime, but everybody works as close to overtime and work as close to overtime as possible. I.e., in California, if you live in a different state, there's really no such thing as overtime technically, because most people think of overtime as anything over 40 hours in a week. In California, overtime is anything over eight hours a, a day. day. Yeah. So nobody works doubles, which means that if you work five a days double a week, a double here for those of you, all of our friends in Austin, a double in California is considered is eight hours. Yeah. Which is mind boggling thing. When somebody is like, I'm scheduled a double, I was like, oh. I was like, how many? I was like, how many hours are you working? Twelve to eight. She was like, eight hours. I'm like, I was like, I, I, eight hour shift is a regular person's shift, but it's kind of considered a double because they cut because you have to take a break. Yeah, if you're gonna work over, if you're scheduled for eight hours, you're gonna work over five by the fifth hour. You know this. You yeah. have to be, you have to take a break, yeah. or you have to waive it. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, but yeah, you have to take a break. So that's what I say. It's a double because usually they would cut you they by that split. fourth hour yeah, and send you on a break and then bring you back and it's, and they bring you back, can bring you back as a different job code or whatever it may be. They just end your shift instead of bringing you back after your break. Unless yeah. you're a back house employee, they do that. But anyways, that's a whole side of tangent. Yeah. I mean, I think the world is going to change a lot. Just, I think, I, honestly, the world, I'm not sure. Obviously the world will change, but the culture in the United States mm-hmm. is like, go, 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 go. Go get her constantly all day. The more things you have crap to your schedule, the better you are, the harder worker you are. Mm-hmm. When I think it's like, it's a really strong reality check for people to be like, wow, we really probably should slow down. Like the, the earth is all like, anybody who's ever watched any of these, we were talking, we were laughing about this. Every time I watch one of these movies, like Blake was like, Blake wanted to watch um, I Am Legend. Yeah. And it's legitimately like this, like, it's what's it's basically what's happening right now, and their solution ends up being which I said, su- which I suggested. Do I want the government to take my child into te- no? But a lot of the kids right now, if you do not know this about coronavirus, are are basically damn near, damn near immune. Like they haven't gotten it, and I was thinking, I was like, well, maybe all like you know, one hundred twenty thousand people that are affected by I think it's actually under two hundred thousand people too, like, um, uh, with coronavirus right now. 120 was yesterday. I don't know. The numbers changed so much that it's like, I don't, I don't think that people are like, I, they're saying like the death toll is doubling in a day. I don't think it's doubling in a day. I think they're finding out who has passed more every day. Yeah. Um, cause they're making it, they're, they're saying it in a way that sounds, I mean, it's extreme, but like, like, Oh, the United States death toll doubled in a day. No, you guys just realize that these other people have died. Yeah. <laughs> Or like they had died and then you realize this is why they died because they've been sick since January when the, the disease actually came out and you're just now finding out that these people have died. Of it. And to be fair, a lot of people are not actually dying from, from and to, okay, so I actually learned this and we can go into this because I have, I have a did you see and did you hear. So we'll go into that segment from here. I've been watching all my doctor shows. One particular show talked about the quote unquote coronavirus. Are you talking about the, um, the resident? Yes, he did. He just, he literally slid that sh- uh, what's it? What's the actor's name? I can't remember his name. He, I heard it and I had to pause and rewind. I, I did. Like, did he say coronavirus? I paused, <laughs> rewound, googled, read all the things. I was like, <laughs> read the rest of it. Okay, so basically, a coronavirus is a type of virus. It is so SARS, SARS. Yes, those Ebola. Are, so he was technically not talking about the coronavirus. He was talking about 
a coronavirus, a, a virus that yeah. is a type of coronavirus, right? Yeah. So the one sorry, that you guys just heard that Ashley's laptop had more. <laughs> the thing that we're talking about is COVID nineteen, which is like a type of virus like SARS, which yes. is a coronavirus. Yeah. So all okay. those, if you don't know that, all these major diseases that we've had in the last decade that are like siblings of Two SARS, cousins, cousins, cousins of SARS. Of yeah. SARS. And they're just yeah. a, they're viruses that have been evolving, and they have been. This one is the most. I feel like the most specific. Yeah, the targeted one. So basically, he he does mention it in the episode, and I was like, "Oh, uh, what the <laughs> heck?" So, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like the rest, of, and also the thing that threw me off was like a lot of shows had stopped shooting, so I was confused. Like, how did they get this in the show, and everybody stopped production because they would have had to started doing it in January when the country was first. So, what the heck does the resident know that the rest of the world did? I was <laughs> I was like, whoa. What did you read about it? So I'm basically, sure other people were tripping Basically, about it. they said that what they did, because they knew the episode was going to come out this week, that they might, they may have done some, like, audio trickery on his face, because he may have said something that's, like, similar to that, and they just, like, fixed his voice, like, had him in there. Okay. Yeah, and they put it in there so that it felt, like, real, like, quiet right. when he said yeah. it. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> So, but it was, it was really good though. Like it was a really, really good episode anyways, but it was just so cool that they like, cause I watch all the doctor shows. You, you oh no, we do. Chicago yeah, Med, Resident. Um, I finally have gotten, I think I finally gotten Blake to like the Chicago's. He, he likes Chicago PD. He really that's loves a good show. Derek likes, he likes Chicago Fire. Okay. I think he likes it cause it's a little bit more lighthearted. Um, yeah, P is, is more serious. Is super intense. Men is more like any like General Hospital, any of those like hospital dramas. Yeah, and then I like Fire, but Fire is a lot more lighthearted. Yeah. yeah, and I like SU, SVU, but we were watching this, it. this episode of SVU this week. Did you watch it? Yeah, this SVU, this episode of SVU was interesting. I thought, and it it kind of we actually it reminded me of a conversation that Ash and I and Blake were having about bullying, and um, we were talking about The Bachelor and how there isn't really a law in place to cover people that are. Being that are bullied in this of people like putting their information out there in the world. So what happened with the episode? <clears throat> so the episode was this girl. She was a ballet dancer, and she she just joined the company as the lead, and she sleeps with her co-star. Um, and which was fine. She which is fine. She consensually slept with them. She consensually slept with them, but she did not consent to being recorded. Not only was she recorded, but then he texts it to the other male dancers, and one, one of them, one of his friends posts it on a porn website. And now she is forever like one of the porno ballerinas, like girl. So she can't work. And she so then it goes. She, she's. I mean, she, she, she could Kim Kardashian it and like embrace it and like find some way to like flip it. Because honestly, I feel like nowadays the best way to get ahead of something is to to take, own it. to own your own narrative. If you do, if some if somebody does something to you, the only way that you are going to not be the victim of it and people like look down on you or use it against you is if you own your own narrative. So what, so that particular part of the episode, I was on your side until they get to the part where it turns out that her teacher, her choreographer and the head of the ballet company are conspiring together to create basically a prostitution ring with these ballerinas. Yeah. Like y'all go watch the episode. Super good. If you watch SVU, you already know what we're talking about, but it was a really good episode. I mean, honestly, she she's very like she. The character was very like demure and shy unless she was dancing. I feel like as like you know, women empowerment two thousand twenty for I honestly all the memes about two thousand twenty people are like uh like there was this one <laughs> there was this one I saw that was like it was like a, a screenshot of like a, some show I can't I don't even know what show but like a like a nineties show and it's got the he's got this wrinkly long sleeve like yellow shirt on and it's like me looking at me looking at 2020 like like this dude's wearing this ugly shirt and you're looking at it was super funny but there's that's 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 that there's like, a lot of people that are like can i have tw- can i have 2019 back yeah like, there's people that were like <laughs> it was like it was like a picture of like somebody like super lit on like december 31st at 12 like, yes, 2020 or at and then 2020 comes up and then it's you like hung over the next day. Like yeah. that's like what people feel like. It's like, <laughs> you're, like super late. And then you actually wake up the next day and you're like, dang, this is what 2020 is actually like. But yeah, like 2020, you're hurting us. Like, look at that. Can we have 2019 back, 2019, please. please. Um, we do on 2020. Uh, we need to like rewind. We need to, what do people, what do people do to like, I don't know. It needs, I feel like we're like a cassette tape, like it's like a cassette tape. Or like I just feel like it's like a like scratch. Like a, yeah. Like, like a, or like one of those things that just like keeps repeating. Yeah, it's like you're just like, yeah. 
It's yeah. going so good, so smooth. Yeah, so oh, smooth. Yeah, just stop. Two minutes into the song. We're it's literally, only March. We're Not literally going to be halfway through the year, basically. And most of us will have done almost none of the things that we want to because we can't. Because we can't. Like, I mean, there's going to either be a lot of fat people, a lot of fit people. Because yeah. we're really encouraging people to, like, get Oh, fit. Melissa, she has a hashtag called... It's either stay lean in quarantine or get lean in quarantine. Yeah. But she's like, I think it's stay lean in quarantine. It was in my Insta story at the beginning. I don't even remember. I don't even, I don't even remember the days now. It's all like one long, one long Saturday, I feel like. But oh, yeah. I saw another meme that was like, there aren't, there aren't seven days in the week anymore. There's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I was like, what day? Literally yesterday, when Ash, Ashley texted me yesterday, something about the pot, or she texted me last night and was like, podcast 11. I was like, Oh crap! It's freaking Saturday. <laughs> I was like, oh. like, you know how Derek and I have like different days, or like we put Phoenix to sleep. No, right? I probably lost track. Just rotate. Friday night is my night. Yeah, and I was looking at him so crazy on Friday night. <laughs> Why are we not running the bat? Why are we not doing this? And he's just like, just like playing the game on this phone. I'm watching TV. He's like playing a game, and I'm like, like literally in my head, I'm like, why is he not like? It's seven fifteen. Like, why are we not doing the bedtime routine? And then I was like, I looked at my phone and said Friday. I was like, damn, it's my turn. <laughs> I didn't say anything, but I was like low key, like sour with him. And then I was like, oh, it's my turn. That's why he's, that's why he's, he's not doing it. And he's probably low key looking at me like, oh, maybe she's not taking her time today. Like, I mean, honestly, like all the routines that we have, like and all the things that we like should be doing, keeping up with, like I'm really trying hard to stick with the routine with Landon through all of this like craziness. And we are doing a routine with him, but we did make slight adjustments for him. But he's just not been like last night was just like he slept with us most of the night last night. Like he didn't did not like he went oh, he went no. he went down to bed real easy, real calm, like literally curled up on the floor with his blanket while we were reading the story mm -hmm. and was like ready to go to sleep. I was like, Oh, this could be monster. Like we're gonna get all to sleep. Ten o'clock, he was up. Or ten thirty. Right, like and got him in the bed with us. Uh well actually I tried to put him down more a couple times. He was just not having it. And like we live in an apartment where the walls are super thin. So I'm super self-conscious about Landon, like, crying or crying or, or yelling or screaming or, like, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, if you've ever heard a toddler go at, like, throw a fit, it's loud. Like and it. his room is right on the hallway with a thin window. So, like, if Landon goes off for however long, people can hear him probably through the entire freaking complex. Yeah. And so I'm, like, really self-conscious about, like, not letting him just, like, go off for a long time. But I also went, like, if we lived in a house, I'd be, like, I mean, just cry till you don't, like, you don't need anything. Yeah. You're fine. Like, you'll get over it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have to kind of cut my, you know, initial reaction to it. I have to go, okay, I have to find some way to soothe him. So we tried all the things. Like, I turned on the sleepy time with the video in his room on his TV, and he screamed through the entire thing. So he's not wanting to watch that. No, y'all need to, <laughs> y'all need to go on Amazon. And order from, it's expensive, $17. You know the little droplets, the melatonin droplets that I have? Yeah. You need to invest in that. What the, boy needs to, the boy needs to sleep, though. Like, well, he, okay, well, okay, yes. Last, then we gave, so we didn't give him melatonin to start. So we probably should have given him melatonin to start. Because we do have the melatonin chewies, chewables, which he likes. Oh, okay, like the kids' kind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or like the Walmart kind. The kids' kind? The kids' Sure, the kids' kind. The smaller kind? The ones that we have in the yellow? Yeah, the, yeah, the yellow vitamins. The you give them, yeah, I give them one. They're one milligram. Oh, we did. We bought the 10 milligram. We cut it up. Ten mil you have a 10 milligram kids' they, melatonin? It's not kids, it's regular. Oh, no. It, but I got the kids' kind. The one milligram kids' kind. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, geez. <laughs> ten <laughs> tranquilizing your son. No. <laughs> you don't give him 10 milligrams. Okay. We it, we, before we were giving him. We don't even buy 10 milligrams. We buy 5 milligrams. Okay. And then we cut it up into smaller pieces. So it's like 1.5 milligrams. And then you buy 10. So, because you're supposed to, you basically like dose them in 1 milligrams until they go to sleep. If, first of all, Phoenix is already tired. Now, I think it's actually like Pavlov's dog type of situation where it's like, if there was a way to give him a placebo melatonin, I would give him one because I think at this point he just knows that like, oh, I took a melatonin, like I'm going to be able to rest. You know? Yeah. So now he's like, it's almost bedtime, guys. It's time to go to sleep because it's not like this huge, like, before it was like Stressful. traumatizing for him and us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The next day he'd be like, last night we were fighting and yelling. And, like, everybody was, you guys were upset. We're so loud. I was so mad. Like, we had a conversation the next day. So I know he remembers it. Landon won't remember. It doesn't matter what y'all do. I mean, it matters, but I'm saying, like, as far as like 
sleep training. He's not going to wake up the next day and be like, you guys are so mean to me. The first time I did the the routine where they say, like, put the baby back, like, multiple times yeah. was when Phoenix was three. The first time I had to really do that. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I was by myself. I did it. He woke up to the next morning. Next morning was like, mom, why would you keep, you were talking to me. And why? And if you know anything about this particular method of sleep training, you are not to talk to them and you're just to put them directly in the bed. Those are the two big rules, yeah. right? The next day he was upset with me. He said, you said last night you wouldn't talk to me and I was so mad and I was trying to talk to you and put you in the bed put, and you just kept putting me in the bed and you weren't listening and you weren't talking to me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sad. So sad. It's easier to do that when they're, when they can't tell you. Exactly. Anything. So I recommend Landon, Landon, Landon starting to like, when you hear your child scream mama for a, three minutes, sounds like an hour. It's like an say, hour long. Like I, I have to set timers for things. Because I'm like, he's been streaming for 20 minutes, five minutes of one by like, or 45 seconds. It's long. It's so, and I'm just like, it helps you, it helps put you, put the, put you into perspective of what exactly is going on when you set a timer. Yeah, it does. The time stamp of like how long he's been like freaking out. But last night, so I mean, honestly, I got it. So he, we got him, we put him down, put, put some headphones on him and let him watch with the, like we basically just hooked his towel to the bed and just let him lay in the bed, and hopefully he was going to pass out. He eventually did fall asleep, but he fell asleep with his headphones on, and Blake and I fell asleep with our headphones on, off, or with our, not with headphones on, but while he was, he fell asleep, and Blake and I fell asleep. Okay. So he woke up at 3.45, yelling, screaming his head off at 3.45, and I was like, it was midnight by the time I put him down that last time, so it's been three hours, four hours, almost four hours. And I was like, okay. So I picked him up, and I brought him into the house, and I was like, or in the house, into the bed, and I just, he just passed out in the bed. But it's not comfortable to sleep with a toddler. They're not. No they're way. not in that. He every every like I swear it was like every thirty minutes. Cup, cup, cup. Here's your cup, Lenny. You got fell asleep. Like all right, cup. An hour later. How much of your cup do you drink throughout the night? I don't even realize. And then having forbid the cup's empty when he got when he goes for it. And he's furious that his cup is empty when he goes to reach for it. He's not even awake. His eyes are closed. And he's just like, cup, cup. So he went, he slept. But so the thing is, the things that we found that work are Landon can only take an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Because if he takes a two hour, I know they say toddlers can take, no, he's not taking a two hour nap. An hour nap at the max. Because if he takes longer than that, he does not sleep through the night. <clears throat> and then um, he also has to, um, and we just have to be consistent at night. Like he moved his bedtime to an eight. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that was happening too was he was eating too early, and so by the time I'm going down, he was hungry. Okay. Um, so we just and like he didn't usually have a lot like better a full start. Mm -hmm. full we start. give him a snack, which I thought this was weird, but I actually saw Gabe and Babe do this. They give Chad Junior a snack before, like before he goes to sleep. Yeah. And, like, that's kind of, like, everything they tell you about eating. Like, don't eat right before you go to sleep. And, like, I give Phoenix, we'll give him, like, a little bit of, like, a few apples or a few chips or something. And then he goes to sleep. Because inevitably, right, the issue is that he doesn't know the difference between, if anybody knows this, when your body starts getting tired, you start getting hungry. Because your body doesn't know the difference. So, like, it thinks, like, because you're, t like, you're tired, you need to fuel your body. So it automatically starts, like, producing this, like, the chemical grueling, whatever, anyways, we're not going to get that scientific. But <laughs> it starts producing that, that hormone in your body that tells your body it's hungry. So, which is why when people stay up past 8, 9 o'clock and they ate at 6, realistically, you should take your butt to bed and not sit and eat or sit up because you're going to be hungry. Like, when I was doing like, intermittent fasting, that was the hardest thing for me because my bedtime was later. Yeah. And it was also super hard to do when you work like a night job and mm -hmm. to, like, especially in a restaurant and you're surrounded by food and, like, I didn't even like chili's food that much. And being surrounded by chili's food every freaking night was like, I'm hungry. Yeah, all, I'm so hungry. Like, so I'm what like, I would do, right now. so what mom told me to do with intermittent fasting was like to change to, on the days that I worked at night, I would change my eating window. So I would just change it so that, because I would get back home at 2, 3 a.m. So I'd switch my eating window to be until um, between 12 and 12 yeah. or something like that. Or like, or two and two. So it was like two after two in the afternoon and two eight. So it was like, yeah. so your eating window was open longer or whatever. And so that way I would, I could, if I chose to eat at eight, which I usually would because I was still going to be at work until three in the morning, right. which is by any stretch, that's seven more hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how I did, like, I can't even, I can't, 
thinking about going being at work at eight and still having to work for seven more hours just like blows my freaking mind. <laughs> like, and having already been there for by the by, for five hours. By the time I got there, I usually would get there at three. By eight o'clock, I'd already been there for five hours, and then I was there. Grinding yeah. out six hours of you and your freaking sounds. I'm sorry, I thought I turned it off. On the on the laptop? Yeah. Hanging from the laptop. Okay. I know. It's okay, keep talking. Um, I'll try to turn it off. Okay. Um what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah. So I didn't I forgot how hard it is to like keep moving for six or eight hours in a restaurant with running heavy and like running all food and all that stuff. And it was like it was I was like, man, I used to be able to how did I do this at the Oasis for fourteen hours? How did I do this? Like keep this in because the six hours that I was doing it at Chili's, I was like, I was tired by six hours. I was like, good gracious. But I wasn't waiting tables. I was running food and doing like a lot more work than the server. Like, the server had we plenty of time to yeah. Five hours, energy drinks. Yeah. Freaking, I would take B12 and vitamin C every single day before I went to work. Then I would drink a five hour. And then I would just muscle through between five and nine. And be molten dead tired. It's molt, it's, honestly, it's, well, for me, it was one whole five hour, but like I would drink half in the morning, half halfway through, and half at the end. Um, but we weren't eating that much. I don't, I don't know what fuel my body was running on because it was adrenaline, for sure not food. It was adrenaline <laughs> because <laughs> it was like the chaos of the fact that it was so busy. Like you can't, you can't just stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's yeah. like, like similar to like war, like the Oasis. <laughs> yeah. like, and I know that sounds dramatic. If anyone's been to war, like I don't take that offensively. It's just like legitimately, it felt like it was us against the guests. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, we had thousands and thousands of people, and people were getting injured. I had to call EMS, like or EMTs. I don't know. I don't know EMS. I think they call it in Texas, but you had to call like like firefighters and freaking people to save people, and like high lift maneuvers and uh, people, pa- people passing people out. Passing out. out. Your people staff, drinking, your vomiting. People. Your staff is trying to keep them hydrated. Yeah, your staff's not drinking enough water because they're too busy. The kitchen working at 112 degree mm-hmm. temperatures. Yeah. So I, was like, how, I don't know how the staff in Longhorn Kitchen survived. They I survived know. because we cared for them. They had fans in there. We would freeze those linen, those those towel things, and we would give it to them every so often. Um, and then they would give it back to us. And, you just, and we would just refreeze them for them. Um, and we would try to do that, like, between, mostly between, like, the peak hours, between, like, uh, it's hottest in Texas between noon and five. So, like, we would try to keep them between noon and three. Like, honestly, I don't really know what was worse at the Oasis. The, when it was hot as hell or when it poured cats and dogs while we were standing outside with guests and trying to move all the guests. I would That rather, was one of the worst part. I hated that so much. Us, we would be so stretched because we're trying to move the staff or the, the guests from outside to inside, then trying to explain to the kitchen where this new table was, blah, 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 all that stuff. Like, that was so hard to do. I mean, it was crazy. But, anyways, we're talking all this, like, all this restaurant stuff. I don't know how we got there. But the world is changing a lot. We're looking, I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm curious to see, like, what changes are going to come from this, like, coronavirus thing. Yeah. Um, but this week, what I loved was, like, seeing, one thing that I saw was just, I felt like I could totally relate to this earlier was Justin Bieber so Justin Bieber was sitting on the couch and Haley Williams comes up behind him with a camera and is like the floor is lava what and he gets up and there's like he's like he has this obstacle course he's like standing on the couch so to the coffee good table game to, play to the coffee house. table yeah to the coffee table to the like to one of the stools in the kitchen to one of the chairs then he gets on a skateboard and like the skateboard rolls him to the next room and then he's got these little like but like the rolling things that you would not the long ones that you roll your back on, but like mini like rollers, foam rollers. yeah, foam rollers that he like rolls on his feet with, and then like holds onto the wall. And so it's like another warrior, skateboard. yeah, across his house, and then he ends up in like a bedroom. I, I, I probably the guest the guest room he's on the first floor into a guest room, and like he the, like he gets on a second skateboard, a second roller, and then he tries to roll to the bed, but like misses the bed, like he jumps <laughs> the bed and misses it and it's on the floor. And I'm just like, it just made me. Was it, this a TikTok or was it just no, a video? No, it was just on his. It was on his. Uh, it's on I Justin haven't Bieber's seen Instagram. that. It was so fun. And I was like, I thought it was hilarious because I'm just thinking Justin Bieber probably has a gigantic house with all the things from pool tables to like a pool, hot tubs, movie, like theaters. Theaters, movie theaters, all the things to entertain you. 
And he is so bored because he's been stuck in the house for this long that he is making obstacle courses out of regular crap. <laughs> and I was like, I, I just find, I, I was honestly, I, I was, I also saw that there was a thing on, um, I think it, it was extra, I think, mm-hmm. either, I don't know if it was Tia or Tamara, but they don't live close to each other. No, they don't. She lives in, she lives in, uh, Napa. Yeah, in Northern California. Yeah, she lives in LA, I think. Right. So, yeah, Tamara lives in Napa and Tia lives in LA. Mm-hmm. So they haven't seen each other in a long time. Oh, that's And they're so like sad. having a hard time with it. So I was thinking, I was like, man, it's so, I'm so happy that like, we can walk across the street. Literally, Ashley and I, we don't walk across the street. We walk across a parking lot. Like, our balcony face each other. I've probably said that a hundred times. Um, and it's a blessing to be able to like, when we're just like sitting in the house, like, what are we going to do today? It's nice to walk across the street and just like interact with like our family. Yeah. Um, it kind of just takes like the stress and the load off of like all the stuff that's been going on. Yeah. So I'm like really thankful that we can do that. Cause I know a lot of people like are quarant- they're single or quarantined with themselves or like they don't have friends that are close or they don't have family. And that's, that's why a lot of these people I feel like are like breaking the mm-hmm. rules is because they're like, I cannot sit in, I'm going to go stir crazy if I sit in my house and don't ever see anybody. Yeah. And they're like, well, go for a walk. By FaceTime, but a FaceTime and a phone call, honestly, is not a hug from somebody. Right. It's not. So it's not a hug. It's not like, it's not sitting in the room and laughing together and feeling other people's energy. It's not. It's not yeah. the same. You know what's all, what I've been really liking too um, is on the Insta stories having, um, so Steph Curry and Aisha Curry did a whole entire two hours of worship. And they, it's, oh, Justin Bieber did it too. Okay, I don't know who we had, too. I don't know who we are on, but sh- they had a Instagram live with Chris Tomlin, Tori Kelly, Whoa. Hillsong, uh, Hillsong United. Tori uh, Kelly does Christian music now? I thought she did country. Tori Kelly does not do country. Tori Kelly normally does pop and oh, more okay. Christian music. Wait, Tori Kelly is the one from one of the one of the music. Okay, so she was in sync and she sang Hallelujah in sync. The cartoon. Yes. I know, but I feel like Tori Kelly, I thought she won, like, one of, she was on one of the competition shows, music competition shows. No. She auditioned, and Simon told her she sucked. I knew there was something. Yeah. She auditioned for, I think, American Idol, and Simon was like, your voice isn't that good, which oh. blows my mind, because if you watch her Instagram story, she sounds amazing. Um, I think the light just changed. Oh, it did. I think the sun just went by in the clouds. Okay, sorry. If you can see us, <laughs> uh, the light just changed, and it's because we ha- we're facing a window, and, like, it's cloudy, apparently. Yeah. Um, okay, so, anyways, so, but, yeah, so, they do it every Thursday. If you guys want to watch, if you guys want to watch it on Instagram live, they do it every Thursday, and they're going to have more people on, and they're going to, they have to. Oh, speaking of that, that reminds me, tonight, oh, tonight, you won't know this, hopefully, Sunday nights. Right, no, just Sunday night, tonight, oh. specifically, iHeartRadio is doing an at-home concert featuring, like, all the people, Backstreet Boys, I know for sure, all these musicians They're are doing an at-home live on both coasts, live on both coasts, which never happens, by Yeah. Way. So it's nine, um, nine, what's a, what are we, nine Pacific? specific, seven Eastern, eight East, six Eastern, something like that. Um. But I heard radio, so hopefully no, because they're it. they're ahead of us by three hours, so it has to be nine their time, six our time. Okay, yeah. Nine, so eight, six seven, Cali seven, time, seven Cali time, nine Florida time. <laughs> right? No, it's three hours. It would have to be seven or ten or six or nine. Okay, so six and nine. Okay, something like that. <laughs> something like that. It doesn't matter because you guys will have well, all you guys it. will hopefully have watched it. Yeah. Um. So we'll probably talk about it next week. Yeah. Um, but tonight, I heard radio is doing that. So they're doing a lot of people are doing. It's it's honestly weird. Like my mom called me. She's like, Jimmy Fallon is doing his show from his house. Like with his Instagram, little girls in the background with like Instagram Live or like no like, video. He's recording his show and it's broadcasting tonight's show. From his house. I think like, he's recording them in advance, but... No, yeah. but I'm saying, like, is he doing interviews? He is doing face uh, Skype interviews. Okay. Yeah, I was going to um, say, Skype, Zoom, whatever. Yeah, Kelly and Ryan aren't in the same room. Ryan, I think, is, is, is stuck in New York. Mm, um, the worst place It's the worst place for me. And Kelly lives in LA, I think. So, but somehow, I guess, does Kelly just fly to freaking New York every... I think every Ryan... Day? I think Ryan flies to back and forth every day. Back and forth. I don't know. I don't know how. I honestly, I think he has like a secret teleporting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he figured out how to time yeah. travel. Um, like a, yeah, to teleport. Yeah. yeah. Between American Idol, I don't know how that man does that. Anyways, um, 
but they're they're doing their show, Kelly and Ryan, every morning from Skype. Um, you know, I mean, the only company in the world that's making money right now is Skype. Miley Cyrus has um, a little show going on right yeah, now. I think it's called it last week. Yeah, something, but that's going really well too. Apparently, she's done a lot of interviews with some really cool people. Yeah. She did Demi Lovato last week. Oh, I um, that. Yeah, well, she so okay. Doing. So she actually. So what a lot of people are doing because they. They don't know. I think we talked about this too. How hilarious is it? A lot of these companies don't know how to use this technology. It's hilarious. So like they're not like the um, the Curry's worship. They didn't save it. So like you you couldn't go back and watch it on their on their. So they did it live. They didn't save it. Yes, you couldn't watch. They it didn't the save the live. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't go back. Like you would ha- you have to watch it. You had to watch it in the twenty four hours that it was on it. It, that was on their story. Did they realize that they didn't save? I it? don't know. But they're learning because, like, apparently last week when they did it, people were like, um, something something having to do with the sound or, like, they like, they like to sing with people. Oh, you know who else did it? The guy that does Reckless Love, that artist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that song. Um, he, he sang it with his kids. Um, so I've been doing praise and worship every Sunday morning at the house. I'll be standing in the kitchen doing dishes. And um, we played worship music all day yesterday when we were singing. Yeah, I looked a hot. I looked a absolute hot mess this morning when I like when I was doing it. Or else I was like, I was thinking, I was like, maybe I'll do like a live, and I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, it, I was like in my blue robe, my hair, did, my throat did not look as nice as it looks right now. Like I looked a hot mess this morning when I was like just in my life. So I was like, okay, but I was thinking maybe I'll do that because I was just like, well, I was just listening to it on the TV, and, and I was just seeing along with it doing the dishes in the kitchen. Um, uh, it's a playlist. It's 2000. So anyone who's like in their 30s and you've been going to church since you were a child, you will know really, you will well. really appreciate this this playlist. So it's, it's called 2000s Worship, I think. It's on Spotify. Yeah, and it is freaking amazing. Like I, I was listening to every song and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is just like all the worship music that I've all that I grew up loving. And it's like it's contemporary Christian, but it's amazing. Okay, so um, let's. This, so this goes into our music. topic. Yeah, yeah, this goes into our topic. So our topic this week is music. And we I've just been so inspired this week in general because we've been wanting to talk about our like our our love of music for a while. But when I was looking at our topic list, I was like, oh my gosh, like I really want to talk about this. And it the more I started to like read the questions and think about it, like the more excited I got about music in general. Um so we're just gonna like go so I'm super stoked, like speaking of music. We've been talking, Blake and I talked about like how many bomb albums are going to come out of like the coronavirus because these artists are stuck at home. Are stuck at home. Yeah. And they're just probably, a lot of them are probably just hibernating in their studios. Like um, Haley Williams is on her Instagram, just like, she calls it self serenades and she's just playing the guitar and singing on her couch. <laughs> like, you know, it's like super, super cool. But it's like, you know, the part that's interesting about it, and then we'll go into the questions, is that they, because Derek was kind of like, why are all of them just like on Instagram performing to nobody? But not it's because, because to nobody. no, but like literally, like yes, they're engaging because people are asking them questions and like engaging with them. But reality, they're low key like just in their room, you know what yeah. I'm saying, by themselves. So it's like why? And it's because they just have something like ingrained in them that means like that's like I have to sing. I have because Miley Cyrus is even singing, but like. She has to perform, like she has to do something. Like these are these, you can really tell who which the people are. really love what they do, and it's their artistry by what they're showing on Instagram. Like I really need Justin Bieber to go ahead and get his acoustic guitar and play the drums or something. Yeah, and me and like yes, not Justin Timberlake. Like, like I had, I was like, I was like, I haven't heard anything from Justin Timberlake. His butt hasn't done it. I'm like, of all the people, why are you and the freaking um, Tennessee kids. Tennessee kids not doing a face? Like, okay. Speaking of, and thank you so much to Blake for showing me this because he knew I would love this. Machine Gun Kelly okay, and Travis Barker okay, did a live uh, a live feed on Facebook of them seeing Misery Business, doing Misery Business. Oh, shut up. That's so cool. It was so, I'm like, I'm sure Haley, I hope Haley Williams saw this because I'm, I'm sure, sure somebody had it. Later. Travis Barker is a, I mean, okay, Machine Gun Kelly, if you don't know anything about Machine Gun Kelly, he is a rapper, but he's a phenomenal rapper, but he comes from rock, like he did like rock music before. He just decided to, I guess people just thought it was cooler to hear him rap than it was to when he do like rock music. Mm-hmm. So he's become famous from that, but he's like Pharrell, like Pharrell may rap kind of sings, but he's a better producer. Yeah. Um, 
I think Machine Gun Kelly is a better rapper than he is like a vocalist, but he has a really cool voice. Okay, wait. Sorry. You're, this, we're going to get on a time. I know, time. but it was super cool. So watch, check that out. Machine Gun Kelly, Travis Barker, Misery Business. Misery Business is by Paramore. Um, who is my favorite band, which is one of your questions. Okay, so we're going to go with the first question. My first question was, was music a big part of your life growing up? And I think both of us are going to say a resounding yes. Absolutely yes. Yes. Uh, and I just, I, okay, so we're going to talk about the differences. If you can see on, and you're watching this on YouTube, close. you can see that I have some very, very detailed notes here. Of course she does. Um, because I sent Amber questions that, that I did not write. To that answer. I didn't answer them in my head. I wrote down responses <laughs> and she was like, I, right before we started recording, I was like, oh, okay, so where are your questions? Like, where are your answers? She's like, they're in my head. Oh, they're in my head. <laughs> They're in my head. I don't, I don't need to freaking write the answers down. Okay. That is extra. So I wrote down, oh my gosh, that I do love music and that music was a big part of our life because our mom is a singer. Realistically, I didn't like detail answer. It's like bullet points. So I don't forget about it. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So our mom was a singer and, or is still a beautiful singer. Our little sister, beautiful singer. Um, our father, way. father, biological father is a producer, um, worked for Sony for a lot of years, blah, 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 whatever. So. Uh, music has been a whole part of our life. We were singing. I, I wrote down here that we probably heard our mom sing before we heard her actual speaking voice. Like yeah, for sure. She probably, you know, she sang around the house all day long. We listened to tapes of, and if you don't know what a tape is, you're going to have to go Google it. If you are under the age of 25, you probably don't know what a tape is. Uh, <laughs> a cassette tape. Uh, we listened to cassette tapes the of Celine, Celine Dion. Dion. Oh, growing up. With a deep mountain high. Anyways, in our house all the time. <laughs> uh, and so I'm obsessed with that particular album. And uh, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, that was what we listened to. That's what we grew up listening to. Aretha Franklin, that's what we grew up listening to. Slash a bunch of Christian contemporary music. Yeah, but um, that was like, that was what we listened to. But not just Christian music, lots of gospel. C.C. Winans, B.B. Winans, um, um, Nicole C. Mullins. Like yeah. All these artists, all these amazing, like, we listened to a lot of great vocalists. And writers, we weren't like really like at growing up, and then as we got older and started picking our own taste in music. Which I don't know your next question. Um, my next question. No, finish what you're saying. Okay. Um, our taste in music kind of branched out to like different things. Like my favorite, um, my personal favorite genre of music. I have two probably favorites. I really love alternative rock music, so I was like really into '90s rock. So Blink mm-hmm. 82, all the things actually made to music. Blink 82. Um, I don't hate them. It's just not like my go-to. Okay. Yes, but it's mine. MXPX, um, which is Yellow Card. Card. Yeah, Yellow Card. All American Switch Rejects. Foot, all American Rejects. Um, I mean, there's lots of them. I can name all, but there's a lot. Paramore is my favorite band. Yeah. Um, my favorite artist right now, and everybody's going to laugh at me, but to be honest, I have to be real with myself. My favorite artist right now is Taylor Swift. My favorite artist by right far. now. My favorite artist right now. Ah. <sighs> My favorite artist right now, I I feel like it's probably okay as a person. I would say after watching Taylor Swift's documentary, I like her more. As a as, like music wise, like the person whose music I really relate to, I really relate to Demi Lovato's music. I love Demi Lovato's music. Okay, that's a good one. Um, but I also like weird music. Like I love Billie Eilish. Um, Ashley hates it. Doesn't hate her, but doesn't like her music. She's, she's not my. It. She's not my. And when we're talking about favorites, this is like if somebody plays Billie Eilish, I'd be like, oh, cool. But like if I'm not home by myself or in my car, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I gotta turn on that new Billy Eilish album. Like that's not what's gonna happen. What I listen to when I'm like, like when I'm in the shower, like there's certain moods I'm in, but like if I'm in the shower, the playlist that I listen to a lot right now is called um, Girl Power Karaoke on Spotify. I freaking love that playlist. It's like all. It's a I have to look at that one. That one never listen to. Like, okay, no. I'll I'll look it up. Look, we can at least like list a couple of. Like, okay, so my oh, favorite, Women of Pop is a good one. Okay, I listen to Women of Pop too sometimes. Like, okay, so we're, this is not sponsored by Spotify, but we love to listen to Spotify. So that's actually one of the biggest ones that, like, when I was thinking of where to put our podcast, we wanted to list it, uh, list it on Spotify because I consume, to be honest, I consume most of my podcasts through Apple Podcasts, but I consume most of my music through Spotify. <clears throat> so, all, all the music I get through Spotify. Yeah. So, okay, so you answered a couple of questions. So I'll answer these questions too. So, my favorite genre of music is actually. Uh, Christian contemporary music. If we're gonna listen to any music, if I'm gonna turn on some music, your favorite genre of music is Christian contemporary. Yes, God is my witness. 
my favorite genre of music is Christian. Like, I literally will turn it on and I will be jamming in my house, like, <laughs> listening to Hill songs. Like, I was literally earlier, like, over so here. So, you're really going to like this playlist that I sing. <laughs> yes, I will. So, <laughs> over here, there's my piano is here because we're sitting in our in my office, or, well, my, me and Derek's office. Over here is my piano, and I'm currently looking at the chords for Oceans by Hillsong that I was practicing yesterday. So I just I just love the music so much, and I listen to it all the time. And if I'm not listening to Christian contemporary music, I'm listening to any genre of pop. So any all like, artists things, of pop, pop. all things pop: Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, uh, Demi Lovato. Uh, who else have I listened to? Uh, I like listening to. Okay, so we'll talk about the number one song that we like. The song that's number one on the repeat on our Instagram. Yeah, I actually there's but, a, there is a group on it. So what is your? What were you gonna say? Oh, we're talking about playlists. Okay, yeah. So my favorite playlist actually, and this actually recently just changed because it's a brand new playlist. Before this, my favorite playlist was my personal favorites playlist on Spotify. That's yeah. my favorite playlist. But this one is the one that I was. I texted to Amber yesterday. It is the women's W H M playlist. Uh, it's like a Let's see, let me look at this. Amplified the Taylor Swift one? Is yeah, it? it's the Amplified. Amplified. I guess it's like a series that they do on Spotify. Yeah. And it's WHM, which I'm assuming stands, I don't know what it stands for, but I'm assuming it stands for Women in History. Okay, yes, there you go, perfect. Uh, Taylor Swift Takeover. So literally every single song on this freaking playlist that she has, we, and Darren was laughing because I was playing and he's like, babe, like no. my sister used to listen to all this music. Every single girl I know knows these songs. And I was like, I don't care. This is my childhood. Like and for I, I started playing it and Mike was like, that's a good song. I don't know that song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, that's a good song. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I haven't heard some. There are for sure were some songs on there that I hadn't, like, I had never heard that version. I didn't realize that some of the songs that I heard, those were the original versions of them. So I heard a couple of them. I was like, I was like oh, that's the original. Or like there are intros to songs that I've heard on other people's, like, other people's songs. And I was like, that's where that intro came from? Like, yeah. So I, I actually, I really liked it a lot. So the artists mm -hmm. on there that stood out the most to me that are like, seem like extremely obscure artists, Phoebe Dobson, Phoebe Dobson, uh, which I don't even remember how we discovered her, but Phoebe Dobson, actually she may have been, oh, she was an artist on Noggin. Yeah. On The End, back in the day. Okay. Which is the, sh the channel that the end used came to, on. The End used to do music videos at night. Same yes. way we used to meet Jason Raz, um, yep. Phoebe Dobson, uh, Maria Mena. Liz Fair. Liz Fair. Yeah. So a lot of artists, Maria Mena, was she on this list? No. But oh. I just that just came to me. We just write that down. I would I love her. oh my gosh, I love her so much. Okay. Uh so You're all these artists, I was like <laughs> Matt, I was so and Matt talks about like the most nostalgic song to me, uh had to be uh what what did I put? I don't even know what I put down here as my most nostalgic song because there were so many, it was super hard to decide. Oh no, I put yeah, the song that's most I just said the whole playlist. That entire Taylor Swift. Marine is on here. Yeah. I haven't listened to all the way through. So. I didn't listen to it. I just looked and started clicking. I was like, oh my gosh, that's I'm with you by Avril Lavigne. Yes. Is on here. Yes. So Taylor Swift, I say she's my favorite artist. It's because she is like the most relatable Shakira artist. Shakira underneath your clothes. Yes. Underneath your clothes. There's an endless story. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. And the playlist is great. Oh, Green Baby by Vanessa Carlton. I love that song. I know. I love I'm telling this. You. this is awesome. It's good stuff, dude. It is good stuff. I mean, but there's there's classic artists on here too, like Sixpence on the Richer, um, Four Non Blondes. Dixie um, Chicks. Yeah, Dixie, Dixie Chicks. Um, Alanis Morissette. Uh, let's see who else. Sarah McLaughlin. Jewel. So if you were born between the years of 1985 and 1990, you need to listen to this playlist. It's dope. That's like for awesome. real. So if you are 35 or 36, no, 35, or if you are 29, bam, this is your playlist. And you're a girl. You're and like you're a girl. You are in <laughs> high school, middle school with us. You were in your closet, just like in your closet, just with your Walkman on and your headphones. Oh, oh yeah. Simpler times. Good times. Not yeah. before there was freaking iPods. This was, yes. Oh my gosh, I remember the first iPad. Oh my gosh. You know what's oh, funny about this though? It's like, just put a little oh my thing on it. So Phoenix, we actually have an old iPod. And Phoenix was really pissed because she couldn't, he couldn't figure out how to use it because he was trying to touch, touch the screen. screen. And he's like, "What is this?" And I was like, "Phoenix, you have to like move the circle <laughs> around. It's like a rotary phone type of situation." <laughs> it's, a, it's Phoenix's version of a rotary phone trying to spin it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A circle. Yeah, exactly. That is so funny. Okay, so the next question is, how or if? But I know you are going to instill a love of music 
into Landon. It wouldn't be hard because uh, Blake and I literally, I don't get in the car. I don't get in the shower. I don't do anything without starting. The, like I, I don't like to turn the key in my car and drive away without music already playing. Yep. I won't take a shower without music. Blake is the same way. He has different tastes of music, but we, we, he appreciates my music, and I'm learning to appreciate music that he likes because learning there's some, to appreciate. Well, because there's some, like I, I appreciate the country that he listens to because I actually I'm not a person that hates country. I appreciate a lot of country artists. Carrie Underwood is one of my favorite. I love Florida Georgia Line, um, but there's a lot of country artists that I appreciate. So when he listens to country, it's very it's it's Blake's happy music. It's country, mm-hmm. um, but he also listens to like heavy like heavy metal music too. Which no matter how many times he plays it, oh. I still don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, I, and, but I mean. When you attach nostalgia to music, sometimes you appreciate it more, but um, I still don't like it. So, so is like, Blake, would you consider him like a musical person or just an admirer of music? Blake is a DJ, so he is a musical person. His rhythm is different than mine. That makes sense. So like I... Like, he has no rhythm. He has rhythm. <laughs> Blake has rhythm. He just... he. He has rhythm, like if you said, "Can you count this out?" He'd be like, yes. one, two, he has a three, music. four. Yes, he, he can count it out. Oh, but if you're like, why if you're like, let's do a move, let's like, let's dance. Blake is a really good country dancer, though. Oh, he can line dance, which no, no, not, he can line dance, but he also can like dance, which but falls in the category of like being able to count out steps. But we're talking about wait, oh, wait, if, about, if Blake had a freestyle dance, though, so he, he has dance. okay. So I guess the difference is like he had this really have like. The rhythm for like soul type of like music. He doesn't. Yes, he doesn't have. Or like, but he loves rap. He loves like R and B. One of his favorite stations of all time that he was to listen to. I think I talked about it on the podcast already. But he can. Um, prob- but he can do step that. though. So he can probably yeah. dance to all of that. Derek is really good at dancing to any music that requires two people to dance together. So like yeah. ballroom dance or like yeah. choreographed dances. Stuff like partner that. and get Blake. Blake can partner dance fine if he has to dance by himself. It's just like, but Blake, honestly, like Derek, okay, he is rhythmic and he does have a good, it's a little bit goofy, but he still can like, he can clap on beat, which is important, you know, where he's <laughs> much like, he can clap on the two and four, like if he has to, like he's good at that, right? Yeah. He can hear the difference. He knows when somebody is off beat or clapping off beat, yeah. or someone is singing off key or singing on key. He can do all of those things. He's also a rapper, which you know. Um, so like when it comes to that kind of stuff, He's good at that, but like he still has like a kind of a goofiness about him when he dances, and yeah. I think it may come from his height. I think that might be like maybe because he's so he's six foot four. If nobody knows this, because he's so tall, I feel like somebody's goofy when like tall, tall guys like even Chris Brown and Shannon Tatum who are amazing dancers. There's still something a little goofy when they dance about like so tall. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so they're a little lanky that about them dancing because they're tall. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I Blake and I have always had every time we've gone like out to like a club or dance, like we always have a lot of fun. Um, I I just have like I guess I have more of like a soulful rhythm, and I like I dance I dance to the beat, not on the beat. Yeah. So and I feel like a lot of times Blake dances on the beat, like he's on the beat, but it's like it's yeah, just but like, there's, like so a rhythm that's yeah, like natural. Yeah, it's like in, like but I but also too I mess up Derek because I change. Uh, I change the rhythm Thank too you. much. I do that a lot. Like I'll be, I'll like, be I'll like, do, I'll be like, like, and I'll be like, and yeah. like, what are you doing? We were on this beat. Why are you dancing? Why are you two times the other? Yeah, or, yeah. Like because the music shifted. Like yeah. why are you? Why or are like, you like, I'll be like halfway through and I'm like feeling it. I'm like yeah, and then like I'll be like, and then I'll just like feel another like you know rhythm. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, exactly. That yeah. that's it's really hard. I, I don't want to say it's because they're white, because there's plenty of, we just thought Channing Tatum is a phenomenon, so he is white. But, like, they are both white, so I'm not, like, holding them to this huge high standard of, like, <laughs> all this soul and rhythm. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I it, it doesn't impede my desire to dance with white. Phoenix has do that. amazing rhythm. Landon has ridiculously good rhythm, too, and I don't, I'm just like, he has a sense, just Phoenix has a sense already when he's dancing of the music, like, in general. It's, um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if this is like every kid has this or not. I just know my son does. Um, but he is just when it comes to music, like he. Did you used to. I used to sing. I used to. Blake used to put headphones on my belly. I used to sing all the time. I sing. I sing all the time. I'm always singing. Yeah, me too. Um. So, did you guys? Do, did you do that with not you guys? But you, did you do that with Phoenix? Like you just like, sing a lot when he would be pregnant, or like let him listen to like. I mean, I didn't do like a whole lot of headphones on my belly mm-hmm. thing. Um. I did more. Oh, excuse me. I did more of the 
just I always have music playing yeah. super loud. So and honestly, like even when he was a baby, like I would always have music loud. Music would like has always been like a soothing thing. Music, for him in general. music is so, soothing. And it's also very energizing to me. Like it would working in a place where like if I'm working in a place that the music is that sucks. Like one of the things I hate about working in my life, which is like I can appreciate like Italian thirties jazz, like or like Italian music. Yeah. Um, but do I want to spend six hours listening to it? No. no. Does it give me energy to, like, really work? I'm like, no, it doesn't. Like, after a while, I'm just like, oh, my gosh. So what's your favorite energy. thing about music? Um, as, when I was younger, just the beat. I love the beat or, like, the musicality of it. As I'm getting older, I'm really starting to, like, understand and appreciate the lyrics. Because mm -hmm. a lot of songs, like, because there's definitely been a lot of songs that I'm like, oh, I really like that song. And I listen to the lyrics, and I'm like, Ooh. Like or either oh I didn't realize or I just realized oh I didn't know that realize that's what that song was about or like I find myself singing songs and I'm like I'm like oh okay I guess I don't really want to see like that is not what doesn't like me I don't yeah. really like be cowering in the kitchen at like this thing you know yeah um so I've learned to appreciate the lyrics the most but I just in general I just I also love the artistry of it so see seeing artists really perform mm -hmm. um is probably my favorite part of music seeing really good like artists performing is my favorite thing about music just in general just watching them all like watching the documentary of Lady Gaga and watching her like in her um in her I don't want to say method but like yeah like, in her element and like her just the way she comes up with things and like seeing her on the piano with her headphones singing and like reading her lyrics that she wrote down on a piece of paper um Michelle Branch had an entire album um called Hotel Paper which is literally her music that she wrote down on pieces of hotel paper and she just created an entire album off of it yeah um so that that's things too much and i'm the thing that made i like about the taylor swift like playlist a lot was like we have similar taste in music which is really cool and yeah. her appreciating these artists like makes you feel that, like you're connected to her yeah but appreciating artists like michelle branch and vanessa carlton like michelle branch and vanessa carlton i know this sounds stupid don't even have a million followers because a lot of people don't know who they are right now yeah um but she's 30 so she she understands how talented both of them are she appreciates them Fifi dobson i'm sure people don't even know who that is yeah um and i love her um, so Avril Lavigne was also on there, which I really liked, and you can definitely tell where Taylor Swift gets her sound from and where she finds her um, inspiration. Inspiration for sure. Yeah, I think my favorite part of music is the way that it makes you feel because it's either going to and and it can be good and bad. Like there's definitely songs that like I cannot listen to because I listen to them at a time of my life. Yeah, I, I don't want to go back to that place, so I cannot listen. To okay, that so song. the J Jason Mraz's A to Z album. Yeah. This album that I don't like listening to because it, it instantly like gives me like emotion. Like I was actually listening. I uh, never told the story, but when Ashley was in the ho Ashley had pneumonia and was in the hospital when we were 15, 14, 14. Um, that was the album that was on repeat. Like oh, I literally used really? to. I yeah. did not know this. So I literally used to listen. I used to listen to music like with my headphones on, um, and just like underneath. Like I don't know, I don't know how much of our life we want to like tell everybody, but throughout our life, there have been times where like all of us lived in one hotel. Room. So the only level, and there's four of us plus my mom. So the only like level of privacy that we get would be like either in a closet, in a bathroom, or like I would literally sit under the blanket with headphones on and just listen to it. And that was the album that was on repeat in during that time of our life. So now when I listen to it, that's like the place that it instantly takes me to that place. Mm -hmm. Or like MXPX is an MXPX album that instantly takes me back to like um, to like what junior year in high school because that's the album that was on repeat for me the whole time. And I always is just like. Or I listen to a Backstreet Boys Millennium album. That yeah. me being like, I don't know, we're like nine or ten years old. Like, it is music instantly brings me back to a specific point in my life. So even if the lyrics don't relate to me now, or even didn't relate to me then, it's the the song, the song itself. itself. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I love about it the most is that like it's like forever, and especially now that music can be streamed and you don't have to hold on to a CD that's like scratched and you're never going to be able to listen to that song again because yeah. it's scratched. Uh, we can now stream it. So, like, if I get a moment, like, oh, I really want to listen to, like, Instinct Bye 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 so bad. Yeah. Like, I can just go play it. But, like, this, I promise you, is a really hard song for me to listen to because of the time of my life that I was in, in middle school, and, like, dating and all that kind of stuff was, like, super awkward and, like, weird. So, yeah. like, I listen to that song, but, like, sometimes I kind of listen to it because I'm just, like, girl, like, you need to just move on. But, like, still, it, like, it was the song, like, that had my heart in those moments that I would go to. Yeah, uh, you got a bad by Usher had my heart. Someone oh, sang it to me actually. We won't tell who, but someone sang it to me or recorded it and sent it to me. So like, it, all these songs like have so much like 
emotion and not necessarily emotion I want to bring back. But however, Celine Dion, uh, as Ashley and I literally sitting in our room with our cassette player, singing out Celine Dion like she was the queen of the world. Yes. And I love her so much. Like, I actually played it. I'm trying to remember what song it was that Blake and I played yesterday that was Celine Dion. Probably can look it up on Spotify. But um, yeah, she she just had this way of like, I don't know, just like getting all the emotions out. And you could just hear it in every like, no, everything, every part of her like saying these whole songs. This song. Like, I obviously everybody's heard My Heart Will Go On. Um, I think it was Because You Loved Me. I think that's the one that Blake had ever seen. Oh yeah. no, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back to me now. Yes, such a good song. So good. Like, I, I was, I was playing on that <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. In the house, I was just singing it. Because so, my like, current, the, the, the current, like, throwback song that, like, still gets me going is Whitney Houston, um, I would, I want to dance with somebody. I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. I, that song was my like, yeah. I, I work, I listen to that song, or my workout playlist, we talk about playlists a little bit yeah. more. That is my workout playlist. That song is like, the, that song and Bang Bang by Ariana Grande, J, Jesse J. Oh, yeah, I can't. can't. That is like the song. Like, Jesse that J. Jesse, okay, so yeah, Nicki Minaj's on there. It's Ariana Grande's song. Jesse J. Sang her Pooja. If you have never, go on, she doesn't have a whole lot of songs on Spotify. Go, well, she actually has an album on there, but go on Spotify. There, she has some live recorded versions, like things of her singing. This girl's voice is like ridiculous. It's obscene. Like some of these, some of these people, which is why I love hearing the raw singing voice, like JoJo. People underestimate some of these women's voices. Tori Kelly's voice is like she. Let me she grew into it. Uh, huh? Some people have grown into their voices, but she. Okay, but she literally. The part that's funny to me is like if you watch her Insta story, she sings and laughs halfway through, and then will come back into the song and sing a phenomenal run. Up oh, and speaking of that, Ashley sent me this video of Tamar singing to her son <laughs> on the couch. Yes, you watched and it. You, and all of it was like her mother. mother. Yeah, you always <laughs> say to people like if someone can sing, they can literally sing, sing anything, it. sing the alphabet, sing anything. She's literally singing to her son to come, to come in the room. And you're just like, <laughs> and annoying the crap out of him. Yeah, annoying the ever loving crap out of him. She's like, I'm that, I'm that person. I'm doing the annoying thing. For her, she has an entire family of singers. And I'm sure her mother. Yeah, her sister. If you don't know who Tamar Braxton is, she was on the reel, and her sister is Tony Braxton. Yeah. So the entire family is Tony Braxton. Yeah. yeah. So and they all can sing. I mean, Tamara. Oh. Uh, Tamara. Um, Tamar. Tamar has has a Grammy. So she just won a Grammy for her album that she just released not too long ago. So, but it's just so funny listening to these people just like in their own life, just, just doing whatever. Like you think people think they had to like work, they had to work like they took them like right. no. Some of these people literally just open their mouths and, and that is what comes out. out. Yeah, and just like how do you just like you breathe oxygen and that's what comes out of yeah. your voice? Like no thought, like no extra work, like it just comes out that way. And, and I mean, mean, they'll say we worked really hard at this. I worked really hard at this voice. I get that, but some people could work really hard at it, and they're still not going to sound like freaking like you sound singing in the yeah, shower, exactly, or singing in your house with no like. It was funny to listen to Kelly Clarkson say like, "So I'm just standing in my bathroom right now, like it's not going to be the best sound, it's not produced, but here it goes." And you're just like, "That's how you sound, just singing in your bathroom." Well, yeah, because but like, I think not because, no perfect sound, like bathroom lighting. But I, and I was saying this like so many artists are going to come out of this with so many more fans because we're sharing like the fact and also the fact that other people that are famous are sharing other people that are like mildly famous and like live stream with them like Steph Curry and Isha Curry have obviously had a love of music and I don't think I've ever seen Chris Tomlin move like I've seen his cover <laughs> like I've seen the cover of an album but I've never actually seen him and they also had artists that like aren't super popular like they aren't too popular and they also had amazing artists that are also other Christian artists and other famous people watching their live stream learning about these artists that maybe they didn't know so well. I yeah. didn't even know who the lead singer of Hillsong was until I saw her sing Ocean live. Yeah. I didn't know you could if you if she had walked by me on the street I would have not known it was her. Yeah but to, if you've ever heard if you hear them talk about like the Hillsong groups talk about their their goal is not to be famous because one there's multiple there's there's the original group of Hillsongs but there are multiple Hillsongs groups around the world. Yeah. So they want to be known as one squad. So yeah. that's why it's like Hillsongs, whatever, United Hillsongs, whatever, whatever. 
they don't have any none of their names are there like they don't they don't promote themselves they promote their music and they all work together in writing and all that stuff mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't know who they are individually yeah out in life yeah uh, but now i want to i like she was on there as the hillsong united instagram so i I wonder, like, I would want to follow her. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, your voice is amazing. You sing one of my favorites. She sings Oceans. And, like, that was, like, literally one of my favorite songs. Like, she renewed, because I, the song had honestly been so, like, I was like, I cannot force that song one more time. When just listening to her sing it just, like, renewed my, like, love of the song. That's why I learned, I learned how to play the piano. Um, but, yeah, it's just been so cool seeing all of them do this and, like, seeing who, seeing people's, like, the people they have on, it shows you more of who they are. Like, yeah. the people Miley Cyrus has been having on, shows more of who she is because she's sort of come off as this kind of like vulgar out of control person and she's been having people on like talking to Demi Lovato and hearing Demi Lovato talk about how she loves her, she relates to her, she's such a great person and all of this stuff. And it's like, is this is the girl that had whole entire giant dildos on her stage, right? Like, yeah. You know what I'm and saying? Why? Like for what? Because this is who you are. Like this seems to be the person that you are. Like, I don't know. Anyways, that's a whole other tangent. But, but um do you have any other were there more questions? Let me see. Uh we talked about playlists. Oh, what song do you hate right now? Oh, easy. Roxanne. I love that song. I hate that song. Roxanne. No, not that song. Oh, Roxanne. Roxanne. I hate that song. That song is the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I hate that song. that song. And the funny part about it is that it's my chance. That song is the like worst. I freaking hate that song. That song is appalling. It's not appalling. It's annoying. And I just, I just, I don't know why I don't like that song. I just, I hear it. I'm just like. But I honestly, as a person who likes alternative music, alternative rock music, there's not a whole lot of rap music that I like. I for sure don't like whatever this new sound is, and I don't okay, like Okay, so the song that I hate, and I had to actually look, because to be honest, I couldn't think of a song I hate, because if I don't like it, I don't learn anything about it. I just okay. skip it. Okay. <laughs> I to right? look it up. So I had to look it up. I was like listening to like the top hits, and I was like, I was like playing songs, and I was like, there's one of these songs I don't like. And I was like, there's got to be a song on here that I don't like. It's called Turks. And it features Travis Scott. And it is like one of those mumble rap songs where they're like, yeah. and I'm just like, why, why? Like, what? Why? <laughs> and they're not talking about anything. Like, any song, I hate any song that has has any of that, whatever that music is that Gen Xers are trying to make popular right now. No, that, that rap sound. I am a person that I love, I like T.I. Yeah. Lil Wayne. That, like I like that. I like that. Like, like they call it, used to call it dirty south rap. Now it's transformed into trap music. But I don't. And I don't. No, I, I like trap music. Though. I don't like trap. I like Drake. Old school Drake, though. Yeah. I like old school Drake. He's morphed into this weird sounding. Like I just do not like that. And maybe it just. I don't know if that makes me sound old, but I don't like that music. Yeah. Um. It also a lot of it has lost its purpose. Like I love Charles Gambino. I love his music. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, love Kendrick Lamar. I like rappers that seem like they have a purpose in their sound, and a lot of them have, like, oddly enough, a lot of them have shifted back into this, like, not shifted back, shifted forward into this music that's talking about nothing. Yeah. That song, Roxanne, you may like the beat. It's literally talking about nothing. Yeah, she's, he's talking about how he loves this girl, she likes to party, and she's hot. Yeah, that's it. Talking about nothing. But sometimes, at least Billie Jean was talking about a woman, and he's talking about, he's telling a story. That song's not telling a story. Okay. All she wanted to do is party all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Good job, Roxanne. I or, oh, okay, you know what I also really hate? What? Um, uh, Tatiana. What's that? Tatiana? You never heard that song? No. Tatiana. I'm going to have to play love for it. I can't believe you've never heard this song. <laughs> it it's, it's, where that, it's where the term Tatiana came from. I, don't, I didn't even know Tatiana was a thing. I knew thought was a thing. Yeah, there's a song called Tatiana. Okay, keep talking. Talk about something. Okay. While I look this up. Um, yeah. Well, this is probably gonna be the last thing you tell me because we're way over time right now. Okay. But, okay. Let me look and see like if there's any oh, other questions. Oh, this was featuring Cardi B. Can you go to the? Go to the middle. Oh yeah, I am. Okay. 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 Okay.
I, I'm not even, I'm not a big Cardi B fan. I, I love Cardi B. I just don't like that song. And it's not, it's not a Cardi B song. She's just on that version. Oh, here we go. This will make more sense. Oh, I heard this song. <laughs> that song sucks. It's terrible. And it's probably not, it's probably talking about something horrible. It's, I didn't even know who it was by. That's the worst part. I just now learned who it was by. It's, it's some person named Blueface. That's Blue who it's by. Face? Blueface? Why did you say that like and a whole person? And the album is called Famous Crip. Okay. Well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Yo. Some of this music that comes out, I'm just saying, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you said his name is Blue Blue Face, Face. and the album is called what? Something Crip. The something Crip. Famous <laughs> Crip. Famous Crip. It's the name of this album. I was just like, what? <laughs> oh, okay. We have to. We had one last question. The number one song on me if you don't spot that. Okay. And then we'll be done. And then we're done. And then we're then we're out of. My number one song right now is Never Enough from The Greatest Showman, Kelly Clarkson version. Okay, my number one song is um it's actually that's actually not the number one song but i skipped all of phoenix's songs okay that yes. i like because because a lot of them are like songs that i play like the playlist that i play for him overnight yeah so i skipped them well yeah so on mine so we when we first got copper he was like we played him like a dog calming music whenever we left the house so i was going through and like what are you listening to him <laughs> it's got all these stupid songs from copper's playlist on here yeah okay the number one song on mine is you need to calm down by taylor swift oh it's a good song yeah I what's your What's your favorite song right now? That song? Probably. Either it's either that okay, so there's a rotation between these four, and they're my top four. You need to calm down. Mm -hmm. I love me. Somehow it was number two and it just came out by Demi Lovato. Yeah. Um, two thousand two by Anne Anne Marie. Oh, I love that song too. I love that song. And then um, Never Really Over by uh, Katy Perry. That's a new song. Yeah. So my my okay, well I guess I can look at my yeah, there's a playlist on here. It says the on repeat. No, I know, I know. Oh, that's where I got mm -hmm. the idea for the question. Um, but my favorite, because I, I, I know my top, my song on repeat right now is the song I told you. Um, but I want to. I'm curious now to see what other songs are on there. Okay, okay. <laughs> so never enough. Show yourself from. Frozen 2, Lost in the Woods from Frozen 2, <laughs> and You Need to Calm Down. Those are the songs. Okay. And then, but my favorite song right now is The Man by Taylor, Taylor Swift. I freaking that video is awesome. That's a great song. We could literally we could talk about music yes, all day. Yes, okay. Um but yeah, so I guess we'll close it out. Yeah. Let us know what you guys have, like your thoughts on music. If you want to answer these song, these questions, like what are your favorite, what's your favorite artist? What song do you absolutely hate right now? That's what I want to know. What yeah, song what do you absolutely, you absolutely hate, hate right now? Do you hate the songs that we hate or do you love the songs that we hate? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one too. So let us know what you guys think. Like what's your, what's your favorite type of music? All the things. Um, we love music. It's, it's kind of like our blood. So yeah, but I'm glad now you guys kind of and you guys kind of kind of also got a taste of like the different things and yeah, yeah. and actually this um what we like and we don't like so yeah. But all right, yeah. well all right, we will talk to you guys later. Thanks yeah, for listening yeah. and until thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching. watching. Yeah, those of you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for watching. And yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. All right, cool. I'm gonna stop recording. Maybe. Yeah, I will. We can say a goodbye though. Oh, okay. So it's gonna be two separate things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you're on YouTube and you're watching us, we're going to say um, bye-bye to you guys, too, because it's kind of weird to just, like, end yeah, the video. Yeah, yeah, just end the video, but um, we didn't even talk about our tea. Yeah, we have, <clears throat> so we have our two different, um, we have our two different cups. Um, this is my cup, and you can see them. Mine says, get it done, and Amber's has a bunch of stuff on it, but it basically just yeah, like, talks about being productive. Yeah, it said, today is the perfect day to start living your dreams, is what it says. Yeah, Derek bought this cup for me. We're at my house. So Derek bought this cup for me, and then I bought this. I'm sure if you've bought, shopped at Target at any time in the past, like, few months, you've seen this cup. So. Yeah, and I'm drinking, wait, you're drinking Shy also? No, I'm drinking um, another Yogi tea, because that's my favorite tea brand. And it's my, the tea I talked about last week oh, on the, tea? yeah, on Veronica and Vanessa's, or Victoria mm -hmm. Vanessa's podcast, um, is the vanilla, the perfect vanilla energy tea. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just drinking, I'm drinking. Black chai tea. Um, 
And I mixed one of Ashley's teas in there because mine wasn't very strong. But I, I also like to drink tea with almond milk. I don't like I don't like like clear tea. I, I put almond milk in it. Yeah. So I also have to put some almond milk, sweetened almond milk in my tea. But yeah. So every week we're gonna be Yeah, that's what we're drinking. Yeah. Okay. But alright, I hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you guys next week.